I'm Karen Schwartz. I'm a volunteer here at the Doylestown Historical Society, fairly new volunteer since June, and I am so excited to see so many people that turn out for trolleys. <laughs> I think there's probably a lot of wisdom and great stories in this room. I'm, I'm really excited. To, I'm sure uh, there'll be time for questions and, and comments. Um, I first got really interested in trolleys only a couple years ago. I know that's, that's probably not much time compared to many of you. But I read an article in the Doylestown Intelligence in March 2016, I don't know if you remember this, about the finest trolley ride. It, the author was Edward Levinson, and he had actually uncovered this 1904 tourist book about the trolley that would go from Doylestown to Easton. Well, before I started volunteering here, I just retired from a 30-year career at Lafayette College, where every day, little did I know, I was following the trolley route from Doylestown <laughs> to Easton. So I became a little obsessed with my friends and family. Like, I wanted to find out about this. I certainly wanted to find this book. So one of, one of the highlights of my, my short volunteer career here is that the Doylestown Historical Society has copies of this tourist booklet. So uh, a plug for volunteers here. You get to interact with lots of wonderful artifacts. Uh, so I was on my quest to find out more, and uh, my family and my friends, the Clarks, were in the back. Uh, we went on a couple different explorations, and then we saw that there was going to be a book signing in Willow Grove, a new book about Montgomery County trolleys. It wasn't Doylestown, but it was close enough. I'm getting closer. Maybe I'll find out more. And we met the wonderful author who was our speaker tonight, Mike Salaghi, uh, and he was so generous sharing his stories and then following up and sending us information about trolleys. I said, you have to come and share all this knowledge and wisdom with more people in, in Doylestown. Uh, Mike is from North Wales. He's the author, as I said, of this book, and the, the books will be on sale afterwards. He, uh, his, his day job, but he's not following his passion of trolleys, is working for Baker Engineering, who, where he designs and plans uh, bike and hike trails like those yeah. in Doylestown. Baker's mm -hmm. very involved with, with Doylestown. Uh, he mm -hmm. is uh, also on the North Wales Historic Commission and the Greater North Penn Area Partnership Transportation Management Association. And he has a website called phillytrolley.org. Is that correct yes. that you can go and see lots of cool uh, trolley sites from not just the Doylestown area, but the greater Philadelphia area. And we're also really honored tonight that Mike has brought with him Andy McGinnis, who wrote the foreword to his, his book, who's a living link between Mike's current research and Harry Fasig, yes. who wrote a, a pretty renowned book for those of you who are interested in the trolleys several decades ago about trolleys. So he's a kind of a link between those two authors. So we're really pleased to have them tonight. We're looking forward to hearing their stories, their experience, and great photos that many of you have probably never seen. So please join me in welcoming my Salagi. Yeah. I'm really glad Andy came up here tonight because if it wasn't for Andy, there wouldn't be this book because a lot of these photos are from Andy. And if they're not Andy's photos, he introduced me to the people who do have the photos. There's a network of people who've been keeping this information alive, you know, in, in little loose leaf binders and in places all these years. And it's neat to bring it all together and present it. This photo is like from across the street from here. It's right on, on, on Main Street, just around the corner from... Uh, from State Street. It's an 1898 photo. It's the first day of service, obviously. Free rides are offered as far as the Old Turk Tavern in Edison. <laughs> One of the resources that we use are the old highway department maps. This one's from 1912. And the point of these maps was to start to map the emerging state highway network. They, they weren't super accurate as far as the trolleys. A lot of times they show the trolleys, but that wasn't the point. This was the condition of the roads in the 1890s, 1910s, even into the 20s. This is not an exaggeration. This is really what they were like. If you had a stretch of warm weather or if it was frozen, if you had a car, and most people didn't, you weren't going to get very far. And that's one of the reasons why these electric lines made so much sense. I mean, the railroads couldn't serve all the towns. But the electric lines, they could. So we'll go back to this 1912 map, even knowing that there can be mistakes on these maps, as, as we've found. It's still a good starting point. And we can do a quick overview of the line to, from Doylestown to Willow Grove, down Easton Road. The 
Trim, Bristol, and Philadelphia, which I heard from someone from Ben Salem Historical only in the last couple of weeks, was known by locals as a torn, broken, and poor. <laughs> <laughs> Probably in the 20s when the line started to, to uh, have, uh, well, let's say, deferred maintenance. This is the Lehigh Valley Transit Line in the western part of the county, which became the Liberty Bell High Speed Line. Then it's several lines in kind of this H shape here ended up being known as the Pennsylvania and New Jersey. A lot of these started as independent lines and then they merged and then they could have through service, both passenger and freight service. And the last line built in 1904 was the Doylestown and Easton. And we'll cover each of these. We'll devote a chapter to each one. First, Doylestown to Willow Grove. The beauty of, I had this photograph for a long time, but only recently, a friend of Andy's, James C. McHugh, yes. has a fantastic collection, and he has about three or four different prints of this photo. This is the sharpest one. With a real photo, you can go in and get details. I mean, if you're looking in a book with a magnifying glass, or if you look at an inkjet print, you're not going to get any details. But with a photo, you can get details. And really see the individuals from 1898 including the kid in the corner of the picture. <laughs> and this was their destination that day. I'm not sure exactly where on 611 the Old Turk's Head Tavern was. Near Edison. I haven't yet figured it out. If anyone knows, I'd love to know. Okay. This is right in the center of town. Three lines ended up converging here. The Easton trolleys, the Trenton Yardley trolleys, and the Willow Grove trolleys all shared these rails. And they stopped in in front of the courthouse to the left. I was at Recorder of Deeds doing work for, uh, for the trail work for, uh, for Baker Engineering, and I was talking to a clerk who'd worked there a long time. We needed the right-of-way with the Bristol Road in New Britain Township, and as I was looking through the books, I found a 1927 right-of-way drawing of 611. Really? Do you have those, I asked? She goes, oh, I don't think so, but we'll check. Yes, they have them. So this shows First, I, I put the, uh, the street names on there. And here's, here's the trolley track coming up Main Street. The spur track up Court and down Clinton to the Reading Station. And you can see along the courthouse that it didn't run in the middle of the street. It ran on the curb, which is kind of unusual for the middle of town. And that was because that's where the station was. And that was the station. It was a two-story high station. You'd wait there for cars to Philly or cars to Trenton. These old sandbar maps are wonderful too. There's so much detail in these. But the one thing that the sandbar maps always do is they omit trolley tracks. But right in the center there, you can see Philadelphia and Eastern Railway waiting room. That blue building in the center. And they're color coded. That's another great thing about sandbar maps. The yellow ones are wood, red ones are brick, and, and the blue buildings are masonry. <laughs> This is looking, this is Eastern Road, You're looking up into town. And the amazing thing about it is the old roads didn't do a lot of earthwork. It basically followed the terrain. So when this line was built in 1898, again, they were stretched pretty thin, so it just was draped along the side of the road. And what would happen then, when the State Highway Department came through and set a decent grade and would do some filling and cutting, the trolley then had to come up with the money to realign their tracks, and they couldn't always afford to do that. I mean, state money was, fi was fixing the road, but the, the trolleys were kind of on their own. And in the beginning, they would try to do that, but it was a lot of money. And it, in the end, they gave up. They couldn't keep up with the, with the required work. And it's one of the things that forced them out of business in the long run. Nowadays, you'd have you know, capital money for transit, you'd have it for roads, you'd have it for trails. We look at it differently. But in the, in the 1920s, it was roads only. Everyone else was sort of out of luck. This, uh, you can see the railroad, the Reading on the left, and then the, <coughs> it's called electric, the, the hatch lines going south on, on Eastern Road through Edison. The maps is 1891, but that can't be right because the trolley wasn't built until 1898. And the, the line through Pebble Hill that went to Trenton doesn't show up. That was built in 1899. This is a much better drawing. This was in Andy's collection. And he's, I don't know where he got this, probably at Callahill Depot or... Yes. <laughs> SEPTA just decided all the historic stuff was trash at one point. And so they cleaned house. When was that? In the 70s? 70s. So guys like Andy got their cars and drove to Callahill and just 
stuffed their cars full of blueprints and photos. How many trips did you make that day, Andy? I made uh, two. <laughs> filled one car up, went back the next day, and filled the other one up. So if it wasn't for Andy and these people being concerned about stuff, these blueprints would be gone. They wouldn't exist. It shows a couple passing sightings mm -hmm. on the way. Yeah. One car would meet the other, and sometimes it would overlap, and the cars would kind of be heading at each other, and <laughs> God forbid they had a chance to stop. Yeah, a lot of these country lines were single track. That's all the capital they had to build at the time. This is in Edison, just south of town. Mm. Now, these cars were put on in 1906, and they lasted till 1924, when they put some of the cars that they got out of World War I through the Emergency Fleet Corporation, and they ran them all on there for a year. Then PRT got a loan to buy 685 new cars from Brill. The first car they tried out on here was built by Brill. They racked the frame, so PRT said to Brill, well, how come you built such flimsy cars? They it said, it's your track, it's not the vehicle. <laughs> <laughs> they threw you clear off the seat. <laughs> These photos were hanging up in the Doylestown Township building in a back hallway for years. And I walked past them many times, and finally I asked them kindly, can I take those down and scan them? And they said, sure. So this is, this is also in Edison, looking south. Um, the building on the left is the Potter's Mill, also the old oh, yeah. the, the Turk oh, Wrist yeah. Mill. Yeah. That's the original relationship it had to the road. It was still lower. Yeah. And the building on stilts in the back was a, was a big roller rink called the Crystal Palace. So stuff like that was a great traffic generator for the trolley. This is a close-up. The billboard on the right says, fly today, with a hyphen in it. So I guess you could get rides on a biplane. I'm not sure where. It's <laughs> probably around the time of the centennial, 1926. Yeah, probably so. This is looking north at the same place. And I guess it's uh, one of our friends, Doc Allman, says that must be first of the month, because you rented billboards by the month. And that's when they would take, it, take them down and put up new wheat paste. <laughs> And you can see the bicycle tracks in the middle in between the trolley and the concrete road. Bicycle must have been hell on, the, on that road. <laughs> so dangerous, because the trolley could come up behind you, or do you want to get crowded into, into road traffic? It was, it was not good. Is it the 611 road now? Yes. Is there some version of it? Yes. I'll show you exactly where. I have a map that correlates all these. This is a close-up. You can see the sign for Crystal Palace, and you can kind of see it on the right there on stilts. Mm -hmm. No traffic. Right. <laughs> It's an 18-foot concrete road. Yeah, 18 feet. It's in two 9-foot lanes. You can see the trolley track here. That's yeah. Turk Road there. You're looking east at Turk Road from Easton Road. And again, there's the Potter's Mill on the left. Yeah, oh yeah. And this is what was across the street, a refreshment stand. Leadham's Refreshments. I love how... All, all the backyards had grapevines. It was a big deal to have grapevines at that time, or any kind of fruit trees. And here's the 1938 aerial. Um, the highway had been, by this time the trolley was gone, and they put in a three-lane concrete road. And I just want to show you an overlay of today. That's, that's why it's hard to find photo locations. If you try to line up buildings, well, the Department of Highways kind of cleared out the town of Edison. <laughs> The, you can see the, um, kind of on the right of the intersection, you can, you can see the Potter's Mill still there. And the school is to the north there. That's still there. But anyway, so, yeah. <laughs> oh, I exaggerated the gear a little bit. 2025 is not right. <laughs> it's a typo. All right. And this is the same location with the Potter's Mill on the left. You can see the two dormers. It's not quite the same angle, but it's the same place. That's why you don't recognize things. It's really hard to tell. I'm not sure why they didn't just bypass Edison, but they just decided to bulldoze it. The town we know call Edison now is actually Bridge, Bridge Point. That's what it was called originally. Well, there's still track there on yeah, the yeah, there is. bridge. Yep. Yeah. Yes. yes. Yeah, there's a couple of feet. Here's a photo of the back of the, of the Turk Grist Mill in 1960. And here's a more recent photo of it. So it's, it's been there a long time. 
Here's more of the blueprints I got from Recorder of Deeds a couple weeks ago. It's a little hard to, to read, so I've uh, augmented things. That's the concrete road, and that's the trolley track. See, that's the bridge over the Nishamani. Mm -hmm. wow. And this corner right here, that curve, is this curve. Mm -hmm. I've seen that. And up the road trolley freight stations. Okay, look at that. Yeah, we got a photo of it coming up, Andy. That's that's the trolley crossing the old bridge. There it is. There's the freight station. This is before they concreted the road when it was still a dirt road. It was 1908 or 09. Nice Which bridge detail. was that? Was that one of the Oscar Martin bridges? <coughs> I'm not sure. Yeah, the arch bridges. Okay. Arch bridges. Were they toll roads? Oh, wow. Yes, this was a toll road. This is a view from the other side. And the building across the way there, that barn, was the Scumbler's Shack. And this was just in the intelligence here again, like a couple days ago. That's, that's the same, same place. And there are the artists. I grabbed this right off the intelligence site, so it could be current. There's a drawing or a painting. <clears throat> Actually, this was done a little later, but it shows the same location. And here's a toll house on the road with kids standing on the rail, which all trolley motormen dread. <laughs> <laughs> this is a little further south. This is Street Road, so here's some progress for you. <laughs> oh my gosh. What? Everyone, including cyclists. Really? Yes. Use that, they, that bridge was dynamited. Mm. Why did they do that? Mm. Was it damaged in a flood or something? Yeah, it was damaged. I'm not sure. Oh, is that what it was? Okay. How much was the toll? It wasn't that much, uh, but e even the cyclists complained. Even if it was two or three cents, it was a pain to dig it out of your, you know, <laughs> stop yeah. there. And, yeah. and the guy wasn't always there either. You had to call him. He's maybe behind, I don't know, tending the chickens or whatever. I mean, it, people lived in those houses. There was a, there was there was a, a pretty hefty fine, like really? like ten dollars in those days, which was a lot of money. This is the Edison car house, or not Edison. Um, this is the Paul Valley car house, which is right here. The it's, it's, there it is. It still stands. Yeah. Yep. It's a powerhouse, and, and for a powerhouse to be here, that meant tro trolleys laden with coal, and you had to constantly be coming up here to generate power. They, they actually had a, there was a, a structure where the Trenton Cutoff crosses 611 right there. Yeah. They could back a coal car over there and pour it down into a, a coal trolley, which would come up here, and um, they'd unload it and generate their own power, <coughs> at least for a while. Eventually, they started buying it from Pico, which was just so much easier. That was in 1923 that they went to Pico. And they just covered up the, the sign that said Powerhouse. Yeah. Yeah. Years ago. And this is south of Warrington. And it's, it's really hard to locate. Uh, it's, it's fun to do that. A lot of times there'll be a building left. Is there a barn on the left? Is there the road kind of curves to the right? Is there an old house on the right? Mm -hmm. These days, it's hard to tell. That could be the location right there because yeah. what's, you know, things are getting bulldozed. Like, you know, they, they have been anyhow, but it's, it's like accelerating now. It's very difficult to tell. But we try, to, we try to pinpoint all locations as much as we can. It's a great, um, it's really satisfying when you pin down a location. <coughs> this is a 1938 photo taken by Colonel Dalen, who uh, did a lot of <coughs> photography all through the area, a lot of high-res photography. And the, the Hagley Museum has these now. And this is Edison. This is looking north. Almshouse Road is just below the edge of the photograph. So you can see the old um, Eastern Road. The old Bridgestone. Yes. Yes, it was. And a little closer here. So in 1920, they concreted the old road. But then they realized it was just too crooked. You get rid of five sharp curves by putting this bypass through. Yeah. <laughs> and this close-up here actually captures a PRT bus after the trolleys were taken off. And if you look at the road, it's a little strange looking. It's three lanes, 
two concrete lanes and a middle asphalt lane. And here's the old standard. This is what. What, what does PRT mean? A PRT was the I'm sorry, the Philadelphia <coughs> Rapid Transit, which was the, which was the uh, predecessor to SEPTA. We're from New York. <laughs> I, I don't think even Philadelphians know that. <laughs> <laughs> what are you supposed to do? Well, this is this is what was state-of-the-art in the 1930s. You had two concrete roads that were separated by a macadam passing lane. And what did those become known as, Andy? Uh, home suicide. suicide highway. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> because they were, it was a terrible design. Well, we had a lot of them on the way to the seashore. And they was, have yellow lines here and there, but lots of times the yellow lines got overlooked. And it was just a bad design. <laughs> it, was, it was not well thought out. It always reminded me of the cooking in the Two white uh, strips in a truck and strip in the middle. Plus, the cars themselves would leave a black stripe up the center of a lot of the roads because there was no, uh, no Permatex, no gaskets, no PCV valves, so cars were squeezing oil out at all times yeah. up the center of every lane. You had to put oil in every time you put in gas. It's so, safer to pass on the shore. Yeah, like our old buses, they had yeah. to keep a guy bridge stream all the time. Ready? They stopped building these pretty oil. shortly. I think by the 40s they realized it was... They had to put more oil in them. <laughs> and this is a... Uh, this is the design of the bus that they put in after they took off the trolleys. They're basically uh, mm -hmm. these things. These things stunk horribly of gasoline fumes. And, and there's a newspaper article that said we like these well enough, except on days when we can't open the windows, <laughs> <laughs> which would be most of the winter. You'd, you'd yeah. get a terrible headache when you ride. In the yeah, they were. They were the service when they when they went to buses. It was a serious downgrade. It really was. <laughs> <laughs> and this is the uh, express bus that also went up. This didn't make all the stops. This went straight from Broad Melony to Doylestown and also to Easton for a while. Easton for a while, yes. And those buses were specially designed and built for the centennial service. They used to run them to New York and Washington. And they also had an airline that was called PRT Airlines. And they went to Norfolk, to Washington, and some other place south. In 1926. In 1926. At the, at the bottom of that photo, they refer to it as a gas electric motor bus. What does that mean? It, it generated, it had traction motors driving the back wheels, and the, 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 the gas yes. engine actually generated, generated with a dynamo. Okay. Basically a hybrid. Yes. Well, we would, it's, a, it's a Prius. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> That's a Prius. Yeah, 90 yeah. years, 90 years ahead of its time. 1927 Prius. It's at that point, they got yeah. three miles per gallon. Yeah. Jump. Yeah. That's buses one in a junkyard. Yep. It was a 55 bus. Yes. 25 years. Well, from Doylestown south, it was a 55. And this was the destination. This is, I bought this. Postcard on eBay. This was taken from an upper story window of the Parkside Boarding House. Yes. It's Moreland Road right there, the five lane monstrosity is between hedges. <laughs> so, this was a world class attraction. That was a $100,000 fountain with colored lights at night. It was really incredible. This is the terminal they built in 1905 because the crush of passengers after. It's in the center. In 1940, and moved it and turned it face the same direction as that brick building, which is the trolley car powerhouse. In 1940, this is really how they moved it, I don't know. I could never find out from anybody. The underpass there was uh, in the center, kind of left of the picture. That underpass was there well into the 70s. It's still there. It's so just buried. Come on, park and going. The, uh, and this, the That's end of it where the loop is, is where the Olive Garden is now. Yep. 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 That's yep. Easton Road and the Olive Garden and Willow Grove and like the cross from Eastmore Park. But the college originally came in and ran around the park. That's what's they, happening in this picture. Yeah, it's station. around the perimeter. Yeah. 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 And that yeah. station was there until, it, until in the 50s. And I ran out of film with my camera and went back the next week, and the mm -hmm. station was a pile of rubble. Oh. Oh. It was a beautiful building. A friend of mine did uh, Philadelphia trolleys named Joel Spivak. And uh, the beautiful thing about writing a book is people start sending you stuff. And a man from Arizona named Louis <coughs> Kuhn sent him this photograph of his father, who's in the top left. Complete with a handwritten note about how he worked 
This is a 1913 photo of Willow Grove, how it was a split shift. You woke up at four in the morning and then took a nap in the midday and then in the evening you came back and you drove the people home. And there's a shameless plug for the book. This, more, more, that picture and more is in our Montgomery County book. The next line we'll look at is um, the Trenton, Bristol, and Philadelphia. And a lot of these can come from, uh, well, from Andy's collection and from Andy's friend, uh, James McHugh's collection. This is interesting right here. These people being taken off a of horse-drawn equipment onto trolleys and back and forth. This was a real problem when they were building these lines because the railroads hated these lines and they would block them at every opportunity. This was on Dawson East. So they, they might build a line of a couple miles of trolley and then people would have to be ferried to the next place while there was some some sort of hassle happening. It was, uh, it was another Arcadia author, um, Lisa Minardi, did a Arcadia book called Trap in Collegeville. She's an earth scientist professor. And she sent me this picture because she saw my website. And she, she said, this is a trolley construction crew. And I saw it, I was like, it's a trolley war. <coughs> this is the August 1897 uh, trolley war in Collegeville. The guys at the top are hired by the Reading. And these guys at the bottom are trying to build a line. And they would literally, they would brawl. I mean, people were carried away unconscious, hit with axe handles, there were shots fired. This happened every time a trolley and a railroad crossed. It was like the, the era of bare knuckles capitalism. It really was. And you can see the kind of nervous townspeople on the right. Um, this happened all the time. This is the only picture I've ever seen of a trolley war. And it's neat that it was in you know, the basement of Ursinus College all these years. You can also see how they sprung the rail into shape, how it's straight pieces, and they took crowbars, and they just kept working them until they made a curve out of them. And they have to do it in unison. And in fact, there was like a chant where the guys would all move together, and they would bend it into shape. It was really hard work. The Chamonix Elevated Railway, why would you have an L in the middle of nowhere? Well, the same problems were happening with this trolley line, except that in 1901, the state legislature came to the rescue of an uh, elevated railway company who wanted to build an L down Woodland Avenue in southwest mm -hmm. Philly. And the Union Traction Company, who owned the trolley line, wouldn't let them put in the pillars. They never did build it. But the legislature had this new law that if you're an L, you have right of way. So when the Chamonix Elevated Railway was formed by the trolley company, they built this section, which also was being vandalized and attacked with sledgehammers <laughs> in an effort to get it to get the line built. And it was eventually built. It just took years. Yeah, McHugh has fantastic color postcards, all colorized. They're not always colorized correctly. These, these are often done overseas. Like there were a lot of uh, shops in Germany actually where they had the expertise. They had artists and they had the tinting and, they could, and they'd ship the stuff back to the US. But that meant that you didn't always have the right colors. If it was like say the livery, the color of a trolley car or something. But Andy can correct that when he sees when it's done wrong. He's like, that thing was red. <laughs> It's in Bristol, Bristol. and it's, uh, these cars didn't actually run to Frankfurt. They ran to Frankfurt Avenue at oh, the yeah. city line yes, yeah. at the Pequesson Creek. Yes. And, 66 ran from and this well, is a... Well, that was actually owned yes. by the Frankfurt to Coney and Holmesburg. PRT took it over oh, you're in right. the 20s. It wasn't even PRT yet, that's right. Yeah. And this is uh, drafted by <laughs> Andy's good friend, Harry. Can you say something about Harry? Yeah, Harry was a uh, industrial artist for... Uh, <clears throat> Uh, Leeds and Northrops and um, North Wales, and he did beautiful work. And Harry used to cut the letters out of the newspaper and put them together a lot of times like that. So the B R I S T O L might have been something that he hand taped. He, he, hand, yep. he lived to be 105. He was born in 1897, 1897. and died in 2003. And we dedicate the Montgomery County book to his memory. He was uh, he he did such a fantastic job in that book. That book has 430 footnotes in it. No, no other trolley book I've ever seen is footnoted. So if you want to find out about the trolley war, it'll tell you exactly what newspaper or what page. Some colored postcards. That one shows a track. This one shows a track in the, and the Trenton, one Bristol, and Philadelphia. Steel cars they had. Yeah, more, more, more modern. Some of the lines upgraded. Some of them used their old wooden arcs from the beginning. Other ones bought lightweight cars in the teens and 20s. There's an example of a lightweight car. The advantage here is it used so much less power. You could operate it with one man. You didn't need a conductor. 
So it was worth it for these companies to invest in these. The problem with the little four-wheel car like this is it, it rides really harsh on open track. Like the baby carriage. This, the, uh, the line from Trenton, exactly, that ran to Doylestown, bought these in 1920. And the yes. people complained so harshly that they sold the cars to Philly and they bought the steel cars. better cars, which we'll show you. There's a... There's before and after right there. Things are so much better today. Yeah, they ran until 1934. <coughs> this is the powerhouse and car barn at Croydon. The, you're standing on the, on the Pennsylvania Railroad tracks, Northeast Corridor, looking down here. And 30 years later, 1932, there's the same location. Was that a trolley car? Oh, that's the terminal in Frankfurt. Yes. 66 trolley came in and ended. And these cars came right up. Right. The tracks connected. There's a bridge over Kesson There's Creek bridge, right there. That's where the lines ended. So often, if you wanted to go all the way through, you just took the train. But if you wanted to get to some intermediate point, you'd use the, the local lines because it, it was a lot <laughs> it was a lot slower, but it was cheaper. So did the trolley go down 13 then, Route 13? Yeah. Most yeah. of the way, yeah. To the city line, and then. And uh, oh, there's the bus. This is toward the end. It's a piece of work equipment which probably was originally a freight. Because all these lines carried freight, too. It was a big deal in those days when the roads looked the way they did, the way I showed you at the beginning. Freight trolleys were, were important. So here, a freight trolley's gone off. And, it's, and you can see the right of way. It's just grass. I mean, by this time, yeah. maybe that's why it was the, the torn, broken, and poor. And underneath all the sod were the rotted ties. <laughs> Next line we'll show you is what became the Pennsylvania and New Jersey. Actually, the first trolleys in Bucks County were in Langhorne in 1896. It was only a mile and a half long before they could extend it. And of course, there was trouble with the railroads, all the usual stuff. Here's Newtown. Back to Bristol. It also ran to Lambert, to New Hope and Lambertville. See, so there, there was a plan for a grand line uh, from Allentown to Philly to New York City. And they started building it, and they bought way too many cars for it. And the guy's name was Albert Johnson, and he died of a heart attack at like the age of 42 or something. And so they never built the New York part of it, although he had bought the rights to the Calhoun Street Bridge, so at least he could get that part of it in. Um, and he, that event ended up being the Libertyville High Speed Line from Philadelphia to uh, Allentown. You can see the rope fender on the front there. Um, that's on the back. Um, if the car was turned around, um, you would drop that down, and it was called a lifeguard fender in case you're about to get run over. Hopefully you'd be scooped up by that right there. It, it happened often enough that they needed them. Other nice, yeah, if. Yeah, still there. And this is the other side of Lambertville. That was the end of the line. So if you want to get to Trenton, you hop on that trolley right there. More Sanborn maps. This is in, in Newtown. And I noticed that there's car barn number one, number two, and number three. So that's interesting. And also there are powerhouses on the left. And it's all wood. Then there's brick buildings, Eastburn Dairy and Ice Company. And um, the beauty of that is there's a photograph. It shows the freight trolley. I really, I really like that picture. No car. Because yeah. you had to get your stuff you to, every, every morning. I mean, it had to get to the creamery. It was a big thing. And there used to be local creameries everywhere, and those started going out of business. So there's a big one, okay, but you had to get your stuff there. And it was, it was too much to just put it on a cart and try to get it there yourself with your horse. It took all day. So the, the trolley freight was really, so really useful. Whole... You can see how ambitious they were. I mean, they, that's, that's wide enough for double track. They really thought... Sure. And this is a neat picture. This is a whole basketball team from a school in Newtown. They're going to go to Lambertville to play a game. Well, charter a couple trolley cars. That's, that's how it was done. Because otherwise, to take the train would take you forever. You have to go down to at least to Jenkintown or, or if not Philly. So this is much more direct. Not, not, not like today's basketball players. You can see the coal stoves in the left corner of each car. In the winter, you... And apparently those are pretty harsh, like the, uh, the 
if, if depending on how the car was moving down the track, you could have a backdraft, and the, the smoke wasn't going out. You were getting cold gas in the car. And then people opened the windows, and it got cold again. When they had electric heat in the trolleys, it was much better. Now, in the Philadelphia system, they were so stingy with the electricity that they would, there was a dial you would turn up for heat, and there was only certain settings you were allowed on certain days. Like the car barn had two that would show up. And you're only yeah, allowed to turn your heat up to... Up, how many points of heat to have? Right. And there were company spooks that would go around seeing if you, you know, you get written up if you but crank up too much heat. around it. You took the metal things that had the ads in the ceiling and you'd stick them somewhere in the fuse box and your <laughs> handles would be sticking out, but those metal retainers were giving you heat. Because <laughs> you were in there freezing all that, right? Yeah, your feet were freezing off. <laughs> That's the map of the detail around Morrisville over the Calhoun Street Bridge to uh, Trenton to the terminal. So the trolley's right here at the courthouse at Monument Square. They, they ran through to, uh, to Hanover Street in Trenton. And there's the terminal. The cars on the left was, was a high speed line to Princeton. The car in the middle, even though it says Yardley, that's a Doylestown car. And the one on the right was just a, a loop car that went around uh, Morrisville. Yeah, and that was so the last part of it to run. That's on Hamilton Street in Trenton. Okay. Yeah. And the car, the two cars on the right are a different track gauge. Oh, yeah. oh. Oh, my God. Five, two and a half, yeah. Here's the trolley going over the Calhoun Street Bridge, which is an awesome thing. I mean, they've restored it beautifully. The Delaware River Joint Toll Bridge Commission does a really nice job with this bridge. And this is once you get over the bridge, Morrisville. Here's on the bridge. This is toward the very end, 1934 was the last year that it ran. In fact, the, this trolley company, uh, you, you had to apply to the PUC, to the state officials, before you could just take the trolleys off. And this line was so they were so done with it that they, they applied and they immediately took the trolleys off, yeah. which is kind of illegal, but what are you going to do? So when they wanted to run buses, the uh, Morrisville Borough Council was so mad at them that they refused. They gave their franchise to somebody else for the buses, just out of spite. There's a snowplow. And there's turning from Delmore Avenue onto the bridge. It's, those, the, those are the cars they bought when people complained about the, the Fort the, or Bernie cars. So these would actually show up here on Main Street. So you had three lines here on Main Street. In the early 20s, you had the big green, we'll show those later, wooden arcs that went up to Easton. Then you had these, these were bright red um, steel cars to Trenton. And then you had Philadelphia Rapid Transit, basically city street cars to Willow Grove. So these, of the three lines, these were actually the best cars at that time, yep. the most modern. They didn't run very often though. Toward the end, it was once every two hours, which is you can't really do it that way. In the last year of service, they bumped it up to one hour again, but it didn't work. And the line went off in 1923, pretty early. This is on Delmore Avenue before they built the flight control levee. One of the little Bernie cars, a little, what do you call them? One like a baby carriage, Andy? Yeah, <laughs> they rode like a baby carriage. Right. I think they were called Galloping Gerties. There were other names. <laughs> oh, there's the holler car. They, for some reason, what happened after they abandoned the Doylestown service, they sold these, most of these cars off. They only kept a couple of these good ones. There was like two left. They sold them to, to uh, Binghamton, New York, where they served for many years. And then the traffic picked up again, and they needed a bigger trolley, so they bought this old 1898 parlor car from, from Brooklyn and Coney Island. Look at the gigantic plate glass windows. Nobody can figure out why they bought this one. Only I can, only I can figure is... It probably sat in the back of the barn and had very low miles. Yeah. Where is this? That is in Mooresville. I'm not sure what street. <coughs> These are one of the lightweight cars. When they cut the line back to Yardley, it has just crossed Buck Creek on, on Main Street in Yardley. Michael, did they keep logs of uh, time and miles for the cars? That's a good question. To answer your question, yeah, you kept them at each car where they would keep a car record on the car and how many miles it ran, and it would tell them when they had to do certain maintenance procedures on the cars. When I first saw this picture, this picture is actually in East Penn Traction Club's uh, 2019 calendar. 
And I was charged with writing the caption for it, and I was happy to do it. But I couldn't even tell if there was track behind the car. Yeah. It's so overgrown. And it turns out there is. Yeah. It just pushed its way through. <laughs> yeah, yeah. You can see the wire, but you can't really see the well, Yeah, you can see a little bit. The maintenance was, was uh, lax. The cars do the run And these were neat cars. These were built by uh, what ended up being Thomas, the school bus company, Thomas, in High Point, South Carolina. They were a unique design. They also built New Orleans. Not of these. Like what kind of voltage Look at that. 600 <laughs> volts direct current. I mean, the sides blown out of it, the backs <laughs> off it. <laughs> yes. This is be between Morrisville and Yardley. Yeah. Little, little is left. And here the trolley, which was on the side of the road, is now going into the road so it can duck underneath this, this train bridge. And there's a gas station. Oh, no, no, no. It was right. dangerous. It was dangerous. So you had the trolley coming. Yes, bucking traffic right at you. Right, and then you had the cars trying to navigate the trolley. It was dangerous, no doubt. So the trolley no was bigger than you, so <laughs> you gave way. Okay. You gave way, yeah. So it was a shell station back then. This is a 1932 photo. Oh. Now it's a golf. <laughs> Same place. What is that? Is that the Rex? Is that the yes. That's the Rex, yes. And I love this old postcard. It shows the, one of those Pearly Thomas cars on the left, yep. lightweight cars, and there's the Redding on the right in the Langhorn. That's the Philadelphia side. Again, this is one of James McHugh's fantastic sure. postcards. He spent yep. how many years? I think you told me he started collecting in 1947. 46. Okay, I'm 46. <laughs> <laughs> the Morrisville Car Barn, where they kept the trolleys, um, was at this location. I managed to find it in this old 1928 aerial photo. You can see it there. Um, it was pretty ramshackle, corrugated metal building. A couple of views there. Here's a car leaving the barn, heading up Philadelphia Pike into Morrisville. How frequently did the cars jump the track? <laughs> Especially well, on a curve like that. Depending on how good the maintenance was. And the motorman knew to to rein it in, you know, at yeah. certain places because it, it, it would happen, and they'd have to be they'd have to be careful. This is a little bit out of order. This is when they canceled the Doylestown service. Kind of a shame. It says by order of the Public Service Commission. Well, they applied to the Public Service Commission <laughs> to, to get them to order it. They wanted this. So after that, you still had the trolley to Easton, and you still had the Philadelphia trolley. So actually, ironically, the line with the best equipment went out the first. And this is the location of the Morrisville Car House today, where that cinder block building is back there. It was built on the foundation. Now, those little four-wheel cars I told you they got rid of because people complained, they went to work in Philadelphia, and they ran until after World War II. And this is a couple shots. This is on, uh, this is below Prospect Park. It's between Prospect Park and, uh, and Essington. And you can see the little, you know, Darby Creek is through there, so you had the little settlement of the little houses on the left. And I, I put it in here because that 1000 series car is one of the old uh, ones they tried to run between Doylestown and, and Trenton that they pulled off and sold. That's that 1937 trip. You're right, all those guys lined up there? Bunch of trolley jollies, 1938. One of, those, <laughs> one of those cars is one of the five come off the bustle line. Right. The one with the bigger headlock. Yep. <laughs> Did people also use them to go from like one point in Doylestown to another point or strictly to go like from Doylestown to like one city to another city or within a city? You could go any way you wanted. Well, if you, if well, you had the nickel fare, you could use it any way you wanted. So which, was, you know, which way people did mostly? It, like to down the Grove from here, or, or to go from one in the Doylestown to the other? People, yeah, people tend to walk a lot. Like in town here, I doubt they'd use a streetcar because it's, people it's were frugal and people just wore, wore their shoe leather yeah. in those days. They really did. We're going to go out to the western part of the county here. Here's Quaker Town. <coughs> Andy found this in a, in a wonderful calendar. This, yep. this is a really nice drawing. The car barn is still there, right. Mm -hmm. still there. 
Next to the transfer table, it's under the floor. And there's the line to Ridgeland town. You can barely see the trolley on the bridge in the distance there. <laughs> That's called a duplex car. Kind of has a body like a piano. You, the windows that slide up into the roof, and you could like a roll-up piano. Yeah, and you could use it as a summer car. In the winter, you'd lower the windows, and it was a closed car. <laughs> Whoa. Again, they did not want you to cross the railroad at grade. So if they could afford it, they would build this. Yeah, and they don't, they don't open cars on here, too. So just hang on. Don't. It was up to you. I mean. Yeah, that's the Quaker Town to uh, Richland Town. Town line. And that ran until 1931. This picture, picture is uh, actually in our book. But is, he's just on the Bucks County side of uh, Tel Telford. The photographer is standing in the middle of County Line Road. And that car is doing what they call the Telford Tripper. People catcher is lowered. Yeah, people catcher is there. And also the windmill. Windmills were everywhere in these photos before electricity. If you had a well, you might as well, put, you might as well pull that water out and put it in a tank anytime the wind was blowing. Yeah. It was automatic. It was a very common thing if you could afford it. They weren't cheap, but. It saved you a lot of work. South of Sellersville, <coughs> Highland Park, which is long gone. So this, originally this line was side of the road, but they would put it onto a high speed line in 1911, 1912. Yep. Are we looking north there? Yes. Yeah, towards Allentown. Okay. And this picture was taken right before they took this piece of track off the road and made a high speed line. This is looking north into Coopersburg. They did that in 1925. <laughs> is that 309? It's the old, yes, it's the old pipe. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So they basically both the trolley and the state highway department abandoned this piece of road. The trolley would build their new high speed line to the left, and the state highway department would build a new 309 to the right. In 1925, I think Fred Barber, who, who Andy knew, he worked for a, a transit company. He, he documented the very end of this service with this photograph. And we'll jump ahead to 1939, the, 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 the depression was hard on everybody and the Lehigh Valley Transit Company thought about abandoning their trolleys and putting on buses like a lot of people were doing. And they hired a consulting engineers to really crunch the numbers. And the report was a, was a surprise to almost everyone. It said there's so many used trolleys out there, you can completely modernize your fleet right now. You can put high speed cars on, which they did. <laughs> This is, these trolleys didn't usually run to Easton. It's shown here in Easton. That's a special National Railway Historic Society uh, September charter. September 28, 1940. Now, in Pennsylvania, any trolley that went over 20 miles by order of the PUC had to have a toilet on it. Mm -hmm. So these things had lavatories on them. And the septic trains are sorely lacking in those <laughs> regard. These, these would. These would exceed these would exceed 90 if, they, if 90 miles an hour. Oh, they really could. When they tested these, when they first built them in 1930, they they they, well, they tested them well into the 90s, 90 miles an hour. They had four 400 horsepower motors under under the floor. Did the trolley go from Quaker Town to Allentown? Oh yeah. Yes. Because there's also a railroad that runs along. Yeah. They they competed for riders. This is uh, south of Sellersville. Yeah, this is. Uh, or no, oh, it's not south of. That's kind of in central Sellersville. You're right. It's yeah. not south of Sellersville. It's looking looking south. So this is north of Quaker Town. Station Avenue. That's now a traffic circle. Pennsylvania's getting going backwards. <laughs> <laughs> no, you're right. You're right. It's not. I, I was. Andy, you're right. This is actually yeah. south of Quaker Town. It's not north of Quaker Town. This is Station Avenue going off to the right to the Q Mart. Yeah. Okay. Oh yeah. Okay. Yeah, the house is still there. <clears throat> This is in Quaker Town itself. Again, it's bucking traffic. It's coming straight at you in the wrong lane. But that's what they did. When they were laid out, there was no cars. The old building in the background was a trolley station. And they wanted to put a power station in. So they bought the house next door where the dining room was. They poured concrete and put a rotary converter in there. For <laughs> the dining room? Yeah. <laughs> that's the town of Rich Hill. Yeah, Rich Hill Road. That beautiful building's gone now. 
Yeah. They, they just tore it down? Yep. Yeah, they just had a fire. And a good old Pepsi Cola sign. Isn't that a great convertible on an old bike? Yeah. Good stuff. This That's is, just below it. Yeah, south of Rich Hill. And the road's about one and a half lanes wide. And if you're coming up here, Still if you're not from the neighborhood, <laughs> you're coming up here at night yeah. and you see a headlight. This is in Percocy. This is on Arthur Avenue, mm -hmm. yes. Old Fifth Street turns into Arthur Avenue. And when they bought the new cars in 1939, they didn't get rid of all the old ones. They kept them as spares, which was a wise move because toward the end, the, the high-speed cars were required more maintenance and often they were sidelined so you'd get out these these big palatial cars. And this is uh, just Real, outside Telford. Yeah, Reliance Road. Yeah. And that car is not usually in service here. It was strictly sent down here as a tow car. When one of the high-speed cars broke down, these things yeah, would come down, put a tow bar, and yank it back up to Helen Tow. They could have used them on there. Except at Norristown, the doors were different. You couldn't unload them safely. Mm. So again, the county line is right behind us. This, this is, now, this is a picture actually in Montgomery County. County Line Road is in the distance there. And some of the old um, 1912 uh, big palatial cars were rebuilt as freight motors. So again, this story has continued in our book. <laughs> <laughs> uh, save the best for last, which is the Doylestown and Easton. Pretty incredible line. So as you can see, the kind of round, strange building, the courthouse there in the top left. And this is neat because it shows both a passenger and a freight motor. Freight was a big, big part of the service. It was important. Where is this photo taken? Um, Probably right about across two blocks from the present here. courthouse, right? Yeah, okay. the courthouse is that, that round building was torn down and replaced with a new round building. The bank is exactly to the right, just outside the frame. This is a picture up at uh, Tohican Park showing the freight motor and how uh, even into the 20th century, horse-drawn stuff was really important. It really was. The, the horses, um, the use of horses didn't die out until the 20s. Yeah, after, after World War I. <clears throat> it was a really important part of how, how you got things to places. Well, Ealer Hill Road is actually just off to the left here. Oh, was it? Yeah. Oh, okay. We, we figured this one out. You can see all the- 156, the highway runs where those tracks are now. All the milk cans are lined up on the platform there. Mm -hmm. yeah. <coughs> and they threaded this line through in a pretty amazing way. Be behind the houses, the houses face 611, what will become 611, and at the, at the, at the bottom of their backyards. And what you have there is uh, the conveyor is, is for getting ice into the ice house. Wow. Ice, ice, ice ponds was a big deal in the old days. It really was. It was a great way to make money. But you just had to keep it then. You had to keep it from melting. <laughs> And there's a, there's a covered bridge in the background there to the left of the ice house. And this is, jumping back to Doylestown, this is, the rails have been torn out when this picture was taken, but this is the joint freight terminal, which still stands. It's, it's right here. It's on Union Street. Yeah, there it is. Trolley freight station at the, at the creamery. And again, the sandbar maps don't show trolley tracks, but near as I can tell, this is what the tracks look like. From different sources, I was able to cobble this together. So the, the Philadelphia cars came up, and they reversed, and they were on the left-hand side. And then the uh, Eastern cars came down <coughs> on the right side, and they would transfer the stuff across the platform to continue getting the freight down to Philadelphia. So. Um, this was, what happened in the, in the early 20s was uh, Thomas Mitten was the head of the Philadelphia system. And he was, he, his big rival was the chief of the, uh, what become Red Arrow Lines, Merritt Taylor. They were always the loggerheads and trying to outdo each other. And they, oh, yeah. And it, it, but they depended on each other. Like, the Red Arrow freight trolleys went to 63rd Street, and all the stuff would be transshipped, and the PRT would carry the stuff down to the, to the docks. Or just to the freight the freight there, just the other side. Of well, uh, Mitten said, no more freight trolleys. We're not doing that anymore. And it totally messed up the whole system that had evolved where all these outlying companies from yep. Red Airlines, um, Montgomery County, Lehigh Valley Transit, Easton, uh, also the, uh, the old poor, uh, torn broken and uh, <coughs> poor line. They all ran freight. And when the Philadelphia system refused, that's what the article on the left is about, we're like, we're going to run it anyway. Well, you can't just do that because where's it going to go? Well, they had this idea that they would use the Redding because they already had tracks going down um, 
Clinton Street. And here's this blueprint <coughs> that Dave Drinkhouse of Easton located. He got it from this man, Raymond Holland. This shows, see where's this present trolley track in the top right? It's coming down Clinton Street. It stopped. Yeah. Proposed extension would bring the trolley track right into the yard in front of the Reading uh, station right. there. Huh. Now, it's a different gauge, so it couldn't have lined up. Mm -hmm. But that, they, that way they could have transshipped <coughs> um, the freight. To, uh, well, they wouldn't. They would just change ends. They didn't have to turn around. We had controls on both ends. So you just took the key out of one end, walked to the other end. and This shows one of the Doylestown and Easton cars in Monument Square. They didn't usually run all the way down to the Reading Terminal or to the Reading Station because not that many people wanted to go down that far. So usually they stopped at the courthouse. And for a while they had a little four-wheel dinky running back and forth on a... Court Street and Clinton Street, but after a while they stopped even running that. It just wasn't worth it. And there's the intersection right there, Court and Clinton. And this line actually had a uh, two cars that were designated as official U.S. post office, electric post office, mm. where they actually sorted the mail. Mm. Uh, this is a glass plate negative. That's why it's broken. But thankfully, this one's not broken, and that shows you the. Uh, Mike. Could yeah. they also use, uh, I guess, that car to deliver mail several times a day along the route? Yeah. Yep. Yeah. It would have been more than one mail a day. It would have been two or three. Mm -hmm. Right. <coughs> they had a serious plow. Yeah. Get, get through the drifts. <laughs> and this is a neat picture that Dave Drinkhouse found. We've identified two of the four crewmen. It's at Revere. The turnout was, the passing siding was right across from the consolidated school in Revere. Another picture of a crew. Like the person peering out the window. <laughs> Take the picture already. We've got to get going. This is a really neat picture, too, this, this family. Uh, somebody wrote on their trombore. So that's all we know. It's pretty neat. Again, it's, it's, it's their... Uh, it's the Doylestown and Eastern Freight Motor. And this is a neat card that shows you the officials of the company. And one of them really stands out, Aaron Kratz of Plumsteadville. He was a successful businessman. There's an article about him where he says, Our, my men slaughtered 200 hogs over the weekend, and we converted that straight into money. It was, it was, it was great. I mean, he had a very successful farm and um, carriage business. And he boasted of how his, his men working in that shop had been there for, for 30 years. I, I love the, the um, if you can read that, our buggies are neat and the most durable wagon for the money built. We have them from $35 up. Our milk wagons are the most successful ever introduced in Bucks County. They wear for years. And this ad looks like something out of today. I'm overstocked. <laughs> <laughs> this is from the 1890s. I've made up my mind. <laughs> Cheaper than they can be. <coughs> yes. In order to get room when spring opens. He was a businessman. And he really was one of the people that funded this trolley line. $100,000 of his own money. And I ran it through the calculator and it's, it's two and a half million in today's dollars. The same article, he, he points out that he had set aside 5000 for himself for his retirement. Just to put things in perspective. And there's a quote. It's a great benefit to Bucks <coughs> County. I think I've done my duty to the county. Because it was an incredibly expensive line to build. Down here it was easy, but when you got up above Kentnersville into the, into the mountains, and we'll show it, it was, a, it was a real engineering feat. I love this ad for Cross Keys. <laughs> Everything that moderns need. I don't know what 1905 that would be like. I guess running water? <laughs> Probably. Not having to go to an outhouse? Probably. You can see the trolley line on the top right there is the bracket arm and the wire. Mm -hmm. You can see the rail at the bottom. <coughs> this is in Plumsteadville. Oh, wow. looking, looking south. You can see how the platform is completely cleaned off, mm -hmm. so you're not standing in slush. And, and that's a combine car. Mm -hmm. See the baggage stores in the back. And the sign on the pole says electric car station. You know, in those days, car meant trolley car. It didn't mean automobile. You know, a motor car was its own thing. If it said, you know, car meant trolley car. They had a small car barn in Plumsteadville, and they also generated power there for a while. And today, there's a landscaping company that's 
on this location, but the, the corrugated metal building is long gone. In fact, if you look at 1930s aerials, it was already gone by that time. Mm -hmm. This is northwest of Pipersville. The line took detours off the road in lots of places, and we found many of those, Andy yeah. and I and other, yeah, we've done some yeah. chasing, and, and the, the, it's still there. This location um, is, people have wondered about where this is, and it's there. On the left. So uh, at one time you could get off the trolley there, you, could, you know, you could go, um, now it's just, you wouldn't dare stand there now. <laughs> this is Tohican Park. You asked about where this was, and it was fun trying to find out. Oh, it's, I did some digging and found out what we're looking at. The photo vantage point is in the bottom um, of this picture looking up. The two old buildings show up in 1930s aerials, but they've been long since torn down. And the road isn't even there anymore. Initially, Old Eastern Road is where the dashed line is. The trolley took a shortcut where the blue line is. <coughs> then the Department of Highways put the road right on where the trolley was after <coughs> it went out. And then the Department of Highways bypassed everything <laughs> with the current road. So there's three different variations there over the years. And there's a neat one of McHugh's postcards. I've never seen a color picture of that. No, no. Now, was that car, were those cars red or green? Green. Okay, <laughs> so I thought. <laughs> and it was a stone bridge, not a brick bridge. <laughs> but it's okay, it's a beautiful, it's a beautiful picture. Hand tinted. This is a really neat place that is no more. The margin, actually it's in the, in the Wayside Scenes book. The old Red Hill Tavern above Ottsville built before the revolution, full of Indian relics. Oh, wow. wow. Can be seen by calling on James Emery. And Ooh, I was wondering, so James wild. Emery? Well, um, right there. I found, him, I found his place on an old map. Apparently, Ottsville was known as Red Hill at one time. Well, that monument is still there. It's a walking purchase monument, oh. I think. They moved it, though, across no, the street? No, no, the stone. Because this, this side of the road is, is this side right here. Yeah, they, they moved it. This trolley is actually going north toward us. So, yeah, that's the same spot today. The, the, the Department of Highways put the road right, right through the middle of, uh, of the building. It's a shot at Ferndale. This is the Robsville car barn, and the powerhouse is still there. Oh, that's in Robsville. Yeah, the stone, the stone powerhouse still stands. Oh, it really is. The roof's caving in. More stuff at Robsville. Hoffman's Steps is what this was called. There was like a flight of rickety flight of stairs going down from here. <laughs> and they had one big famous derailment. <gasps> and no one was killed. But there was a big landslide. You can see that it just completely tore up the road bed. They cribbed it up there. The steps, I guess temporary steps they brought in. And again, with a real photograph, you can get in close and you can see these people. The guy, second from left, his name was J.E. Michener, and he's listed as a freight agent. I don't know if in Doylestown or where. I was thinking, the poor guy in second from right is really badly scarred. And makes you realize how tough industrial work was 100 years ago. People were, and, and what kind of, you know, help did you get at the doctors? Well, you know, they'll pass you up maybe. With a color postcard of the line near Lock 22. The D and E, or uh, yeah, D and L. The line ended unceremoniously in the middle of the street here. Um, you can barely see coming up very thin uh, two rails that just stop there uh, in Easton. And from there, you either boarded a Lehigh Valley Transit car to the center of town, or you walked the half mile over the bridge. I did put the entire line on a Google map, and if you Type in that URL there, time URL, D hyphen E trolley. You can see the entire line in detail. Um, there's notes along there. There's photographs you can pull up. It seems the best way to do it these days. Just make a Google map. This is Andy McGinnis, who worked for 38 years at SEPTA. 
It was in your, your coworkers called you an iron wheel man, not a bus man. We were iron wheel people. Well, I hope you enjoyed it. Well, Mike, uh, thank you very much. Oh, you're most welcome. Token of our appreciation. Well, thank you kindly. Thank you very much.